How do you make your city energy smart and fit for the low carbon future? With a concerto initiative, the European Union has supported cities and communities on their way to becoming just that. So what's the main focus? It's a holistic approach, one that provides energy efficiency measures, renewable energy sources, and the integration of innovative technologies. Concerto is intended to help realize the 2020 targets of the EU's energy and climate policy. 20% more energy efficiency, a 20% increase in the use of renewable energy, and a 20% reduction in CO2 emissions by 2020, compared to 1990. It's about reducing energy demand by improving the energy efficiency of buildings at a community level, whilst taking the supply end into consideration by ensuring the use of renewable energy sources. At the same time, energy losses are reduced to a minimum during transmission. This combination has shown success in 58 European cities and communities. Considering all these aspects, the first step is the most important one, and that is planning. It brings together all key players of urban development. In this case, the City of Grenoble's interdisciplinary team of planners. They adopt an innovative approach to town planning and energy management right from the start. Above all, it's about people, especially the residents. It's important to involve them from the beginning. In Vitoria Gasteis, in the Spanish Basque region, the authorities do just that by organizing public awareness campaigns and events to inform and to listen to citizens, like this exhibition here about the Green Capital 2012. We can improve technology and improve products, but if people don't change their consumer behavior and the way they use products, then we'll achieve absolutely nothing. Many concerto projects have realized the idea of citizen participation and have developed various creative ways to involve residents. But this alone is not enough. The right mix of energy efficiency measures, renewable energy sources and the integration of technologies are also essential. The focus is on retrofitting measures and on new buildings constructed with high energy efficiency standards in the forefront. That's because about 40% of energy consumption and 36% of CO2 emissions result from heating and the use of electricity in buildings. It means that they have to be constructed in the most energy efficient way possible, as for example in the case of Sweden's largest wooden new building in Veku. Its insulated facades and triple glazed windows keep its energy requirements to a minimum. In Ireland's first eco-village, Clough Jordan, particular attention is paid to the energy used in house construction, to the so-called embodied energy. The focus is on the house's total energy balance. One of the principles for the eco-village is to build and insulate its houses using only natural materials from the region. But also in older buildings like these in Budapest, there are ways to reduce their energy consumption by retrofitting them. Not only does this reduce CO2 emissions, it also cuts residents' heating costs. In this case, heating costs have been halved. That's also due to the fact that solar energy now covers most of their heating needs. But if renewable energy doesn't come from the collectors, where does it come from then? In the eco-village, 100% of the energy for heating is renewable and comes from wood chips from the local forest and solar panels. Mobjek in Denmark has adopted a different method. It is home to one of the largest biogas plants in the world. It uses manure picked up from local farms to produce biogas which produces electricity and heating for 20,000 households. But smaller residential areas can also produce their own energy efficiently and sustainably, as seen in the Leon district of Salzburg in Austria. Here, a 2,000 square meter solar collector is the main source of energy for the area. The water heated by the solar collectors is stored in a 200,000 liter water tank, 
which then distributes heat and hot water to the 130 apartments via a district heating network. However, it isn't always just a matter of heat and energy requirements, but increasingly it's also a question of the cooling that buildings need, like the hospital in Veko, Sweden. Technical solutions using as little energy as possible are needed. An interesting technical solution is so-called polygeneration, an efficient use of energy which generates electricity, heat and cooling. In some power stations which only generate electricity, about 70% of the energy produced is wasted through heat loss, heat which remains unused. Here we have a utilization rate of 95% thanks to simultaneous power heat generation. But that's not the limit to efficiency. The heat produced by the power generators can be used to produce cooling. This also takes place on a large scale in Terranola in Spain. Absorption chillers use heat to cool the Parque del Alba IT and Science Park. In the end, it's the interplay of all these measures that creates a sustainable community. The monitoring process measures how successful it's been. I always try to keep in mind the building as a whole, and then I analyze energy flows. It's a constant search. How can we become even more efficient? Where can we make further improvements? Concerto gave us a lot of impetus in these respects. And that's exactly what the EU initiatives for energy-efficient districts and smart cities and communities do. They provide momentum and official support for those who demonstrate how we can make our cities fit for the low-carbon society.